Let's talk about JDK enhancement proposal number 361, switch expressions. This comes as a preview in Java 12 and Java 13, and now we can see it as a standard in Java 14. We are going to look at the modification for switch expression and how pre-Java 12 switch statements look like. We are going to see multiple constants per case. We are going to um, address the syntactical sugar of uh, arrow labels, a very interesting approach. We are going to talk about how to convert a switch statement into a switch expression and how to yield the value uh, using a switch expression or from within a switch expression. And last but not least, we're going to uh, treat the concept of exhaustiveness and see what compiler does in such cases. The source code for this uh, part of the video uh, is in the class called switch expressions in package com github kenbt java 14 se this example we follow the same thought process as the snippets in the jdk enhancement proposal 361 the main idea is that we want to have meetings every other day starting monday so we have a calendar and that's what we're gonna simulate in this application now with that idea in mind let's look at the examples and start doing some variations the first example we are going to look at how the things were before Java 12. And what you observe here is a classical old school switch statement that look at the weekday. A weekday is an enumeration we created where we obviously list all the days in the week. And based on the weekday and our example that we are trying to construct, we are going to display um, a message to the, to the user. So as you can see here, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays we say that let's meet for Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. There is simply no action. And on Sunday, we just want to celebrate that day and make it a, a free day. Now, together with this example, let's look a little bit at what were the issues with this particular syntax. As I mentioned earlier, there is similar behavior for Monday, Wednesday and Friday and similar for Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. But we cannot actually capture the same uh, behavior in into a more compact fashion. Uh, the other issue that we observe is, and this is inherited actually as a syntax from the C and C++ world, if we forget to put this break after each case statement, the code is simply just going to fall through. And that is a behavior a lot of the developers didn't actually, actually like. We are going to see in the upcoming examples how the uh, new switch expression syntactic uh, capabilities is enhancing this, uh, uh, this situation. In what I call the multi-case example, we are going to condense some of the case statements from the previous one. You see this long line here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And in the new model, we are gonna, just going to take the same behavior and put it under only one case statement. So we're going to treat Monday, Wednesday and Friday in a similar fashion and we're going to display the message let's meet over here while in the case of Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday we're just not going to do anything and as you can see the code looks much more compact probably we saved at least 15 lines of, uh, of code we still though need to use the break statement so don't forget about, uh, about them let's quickly compile and run and observe the behavior. So if today is Monday, the message that is going to be displayed is uh, let's meet. If um, today would be Sunday, uh, let's see what message we get in that particular case. Well, let's meet, but <laughs> it's, it's Sunday though. Now let's look at some more interesting syntax, which is the so-called arrow labels. And in this particular example, we are going to emphasize two um, important attributes of this new syntax. So let's start with the, with the real syntax. You see this operator called um, arrow. This actually replaced, replaces the um, column that we used in the, in the classic statements. 
apparently there is no fundamental difference, right? In case of Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are still going to display a message. But what you can observe here is that we can also attach a block of execution to this arrow label. That's number one difference, and we'll discuss in a little bit why this is so, so important. Number two important difference is the fact that, as you can see, all the break statements we used to have here, they just disappeared. So we do not need them anymore. Let's compile and run this particular example. So if it's Monday, we display let's meet. If it's Sunday, we have the same behavior. There we go. In all the previous examples, we decided to display messages to the user as the code went through the switch statement. But what if we want to capture the message and leverage it afterwards? Well, one way to do it is to declare a variable and populate that variable throughout the, the uh, switch statement. But wouldn't it be nicer if we can just consider it of a sort of return from this switch statement? And that's how we convert a switch statement to a switch expression. And <clears throat> the syntax here permits several several things, right, with the arrow operator. Number one, we can just yield this value into the into the message variable. Number two, we can actually have an entire block block where we can do uh, more, let's say, computation, if you if you will. In this particular scenario, we just take the timestamp and we display where, where we yield, we return a customized message. And you can observe this newly introduced keyword, which is yield. It's sort of equivalent to return, if you want. And this is going to push the, this particular result into, into the, the message. Another subtle difference is the variable scoping. Um, in the old syntax, if you declare a variable at this point, you wouldn't be able to redeclare it again. But now we talk about true execution blocks. That means that this particular time that we declared and we actually defined in this line has nothing to do with the next one. They are isolated in their in their scope. And getting back to the motivation for, for yielding, in the end we are gonna just capture the message. The, the message from um, any of these um, um, case statements um, here without using uh, explicitly the yield keyword and here using the, the yield keyword. Now let's run it. So because we decided today to be Sunday the message is, uh, let me maximize this, take some rest for a day because it is Saturday. Actually today is the real day is Saturday. We are going to finish the discussion about switch expressions uh, by discussing a concept called exhaustiveness. So in the examples that we've seen so far, we would use an enumeration for the weekday. And somehow that created a limited set or, or a discrete set for, for, for us. What happens if, for example, instead of having this enumeration, we will decide that we can simply use numbers. So we just number the days of the week from 1 to 7, 1 for Monday and 7 for, for Sunday. And let's try to rewrite the code from the previous example as, uh, as a switch expression that takes as a parameter an integer as we as we actually see here so all is good no fundam no really big difference if you if you will in case one three and five let's meet two four six then we do the other processing and so on and so forth apparently everything here is is good and and, and fine but what would happen if for example instead of a legit value between 1 and 7, we would pass 0 or minus 1. 
which is a perfectly valid integer. Then the compiler will need to force us to use a default statement because in that case the message will remain uninitialized. All right, so let's go ahead and run this example. The example will compile for now uh, because we added this default statement but let's see what happens if we take it away like we had in the previous examples. In this case we're going to get a compilation error stating the switch expression does not cover all possible input values. What this means, as I said earlier, we could potentially put an invalid parameter here and that will make the message variable essentially uninitialized and the compiler doesn't like that. Uh, the situation that we are in right now uh, can actually happen in the previous case. So if we, for example, eliminate this case that covers Sunday, we're going to get exactly the same compilation error. So let's take a look at it. As you can see, the switch expression does not cover all the possible input values and this happens at line 131 which is right over over here in in this in this method to conclude we always need to have full coverage of the initialized uh, of the initialization of the variables when we use switch um, expressions this concludes our uh, video about uh, switch expressions and thank you very much for watching waiting for you at the next video